Welcome to the EXP Group, one of the leading providers of business training solutions. Please enjoy this presentation and visit us on the web at www.theexpgroup.com for more information. Hello and welcome to today's EXP video for ACCA paper P3 Business Analysis. Now, we're on chapter 5 of our express notes on page 24. Yesterday we looked at Gould and Campbell and the parenting style theory. Today we're going to look at portfolio analysis and introduce us to Boston Consulting Group Matrix, known as the BCG Matrix, Boston Consulting Group. A very well-known matrix. It has actually been criticised quite heavily by various observers, but it is very well known nonetheless. And the, the broad idea behind this is that it enables organisation, organisations that have a portfolio of products to map these onto a matrix. And once they have mapped these, it will determine what they will then do in terms of supporting that particular product. So going through the notes. This matrix helps organizations analyze their products or business units. It helps identify priorities and where resources should be allocated. So that's what it's used for, helping identify priorities and where resources should be allocated. So we use it where we have a portfolio of products or business units. So what we've got is the matrix, matrix, BCG matrix. Now the easiest way to remember this is it's based according to how attractive the market is. So is it an attractive? Is it an attractive market to be in? And they determine whether it's an attractive market by looking at the growth rate with the view that if it's a high growth rate market, it's an attractive market to be. Because the market is grown, it's attractive. If it's a low growth rate, then it, it's not that attractive to be in. On the other side of the matrix, they look at the strength. their strength of that particular item and they, they measure the strength by looking at the market share with the view taken that if you've got a high market share you are strong in that particular industry if you've got a low market share then you're weaker so that's the basic idea it plots various products according to whether they are in a strong position or a weak position and whether they are in an attractive market or an unattractive market. So let's have a quick look at some of them. Let's imagine first of all then we are here. We've got a low market share but in a high growth rate market. So taking a step back, what does that actually mean? It means we're, we're in the right market, we're in a good market, but we're in a weak position. So that's why it's called a question mark. We're in the right place, but we're not doing particularly well at the moment. Now the question mark is sometimes known as a problem child. Problem child. So the question mark or problem child is the same thing. The next one, let's imagine we're here in this quadrant. We've got a high market share, which means we're in a strong position, and we're in the high growth rate industry, which means we're in an attractive market. So this is good news. We're in the right place, and we've got a strong market share. They're stars. Now the thing to be aware of with STARS is that because it's an attractive market, other companies 
other organizations are trying to enter that market. So stars will not necessarily be generating profits because they could be spending a lot of money to maintain their market share. The next one to look at, what happens if you've got a high market share? So that means you're in a strong position in a low growth rate market. So that means you've got a strong position, but because it's not a high growth rate market, other organizations are not trying to enter the market. So we're in quite a good position. We're a cash cow. That means it's, it's a cow that is generating cash and we can milk it for cash. The next one. We're in a low growth rate industry with a low market share. That means we're not a very strong position and in not a very attractive market. We've got a dog and maybe you should shoot the dog. That's according to the theory. Now I've said there are various um, criticisms of this model. People over the years have argued it is quite weak. One of the weaknesses is saying that look this this matrix is saying that every dog should be condemned. We should get rid of every product that is a dog. But there are dogs that have a low market share in a low growth rate, growth rate industry that actually are generating rather nice profits. So what do we actually use this for? Let's have a quick look now at what an organization would use it for. Um, what we're going to look at now is the cash movement. Cash movement. So this is saying, what do we do with the cash? Now, which organization or, or which part within the portfolio is generating cash? It's a cash cow. Now, the cash generated on that product should be spent to, to support the question mark. So, the product that is a cash cow that cash that is generated should go to support the question mark because the aim of the question mark is to win market share to move it so it becomes a star. So the cash would go to the question mark to help it gain a market share. Cash should also go to the star. Because remember, the star is not necessarily generating cash because it's defending its position against other companies that are trying to enter that. So by pushing the, cow, pushing the cash from the cash cow there, hopefully as the market growth rate slows down, the star will move to become a cash cow. So if we look at the, the notes here, this is saying about the balanced portfolio. What do we need within this portfolio? Well, yeah, we want stars. We want stars to ensure that we get the cash cows of the future. And we want question marks to be able to convert those to stars. And as I've just highlighted with the use of the cash, we need cash cows to provide funding to develop the stars and question marks. So that's the Boston Consulting Group matrix, which identifies sort of portfolio management. Tomorrow, we will be looking at another portfolio management matrix called the General Electric Matrix. So please come back again tomorrow to listen to that video. And thank you very much for listening to today's video.